This is drive time. We get the man who wrote the article, Jack Elson. Good afternoon. Afternoon, Jeremy. This How only are came you? about, my friends, because Jack texted me last night and said, don't speak to me now I'm drunk, but I've written this article, front page, I'll come on tomorrow. <laughs> and here I am, you know. <laughs> Good man, you look a bit worse for wear. Watch this response. Is this your first ever front page? <laughs> Kitchen to Smith. I've been on various of your shows before talking about my front pages. This is uh, this is one in a long line, but I think actually, you know what, it could be um, the most important one I've ever written because it does have seismic consequences, not just for freedom in the country, but also for our beloved pub industry. If you've heard anything today, it's hospitality bosses saying this is going to absolutely cripple us. So you know, maybe we can get into some of that. But yeah, it's uh, it's very big news today. It's really interesting. Um, we we I mean we haven't spoken for a while. Um, absolute outrage not just about this but over the last few weeks and i was going to ask this from a political standpoint because so many people are saying so let me get this right they're going to release prisoners early let me get this right you can be given 15 months in prison for a facebook comment mm. let me get this absolutely right you can be a doctor or a, i don't know a train driver and get a inflation busting rise within weeks of labor being in power mm. yes we're all really surprised i'm not surprised this is what socialism is about they will next tax middle england but this is to me an even bigger attempt at not our liberty but 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 too much control listen everybody knows i have the occasional cigarette i absolutely know i'm that old that i even i can remember i mean how bad is this smoking on planes mm. i i don't believe there's a place for smoking in that instance anymore i think it's great it's not inside pubs and in restaurants and rooms where people don't like it but if you are telling average people that they can't go outside to a, a hut that's made for a cigarette personal choice right Seriously? Mm. And, and if you want to take me on about the NHS, Sir Keir Starmer, I'll tell you what, do something about fat Britain, because mm. the obesity, which is an epidemic, we were talking about it yesterday mm. on the show, is also relevant. But of course, all the do-gooders will jump up and down and say, smoking's appalling. So, yes, it probably is. But we're also surely not at a point where we're not able to choose anything anymore under this government? No, the um, the government documents which um, which I received and have written about How did about you get it? Length, How did you get this story? I, you know... A, a, a passed to passed to me by a source, but I can't. I can't read. Really no, no, I don't it. want to know the source. But I, it was I, passed to you. Yeah, it's yeah, a very yeah, important story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I've got. I've, I have seen um, a lot of uh, government documents, um, which um, expose this plan uh, in full. Um, something which the government seems to be working on for some time. Uh, it's completely, uh, almost certainly, uh, fleshed out. In this plan, uh, it makes clear that the government believes that the public will be on their side when they announce this. Um, they are making the calculation that only 6 million people in this country smoke, so that's about 13%, and therefore 87% do not smoke. The problem I think a lot of people are having today, one is the catastrophic, potentially, effect on hospitality yes. industries, which have invested a lot of money. Who COVID and yeah. have spent money on making on all these outdoor areas. areas. Yes. But also the fact that I think people will ask, if you were so confident in this public position, then why on earth one wasn't it in your election manifesto yep. and why wasn't it in the King's speech when this bill came forward only a few weeks ago? Because what they've done with this bill is they presented it in Parliament not too long ago and now very quickly they have massively ramped it up without anybody knowing about it until we revealed it on the front page of The Sun today. It's really interesting to me because, um, you know, if we get away from I'm I'm shocked that people couldn't see through the socialist angle of this government, mm. we're talking about liberty here, right? Mm. We're talking we're talking about... I mean, here's a really good message here from Kristen Newbury. Jess, the smokers could hit back at Starmer as early as tomorrow. Stop smoking and deny the Treasury billions. Mm. It's not even that for me. I'm talking about free choice. Mm. Are you telling me that you want to live in a country where you are not allowed to do things? I, 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 honestly, it, it begs the question, how much more Jack was not in the in the manifesto that's going to be foisted upon this country mm. in, a, in a really underhand way? And I can't believe this is only two months in. And that's the point a lot of critics are making today, is the fact that if this wasn't in the manifesto, then you don't really have a mandate for it. Now, often governments do things, you know, which they, you know, don't put in their manifesto, but it's usually much further along in the parliament. Well, somebody said to me yesterday, is he doing it now because there's a massive bounce, because he's going to get the unpopular things out of the way? I'll tell you what I'd like to watch mm. and listen to. Uh, Nigel Farage, have a listen. This was his response. It's not nanny statism, it's authoritarianism. Uh, it is, you know, I know what is best for you and you will damn well do it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take your legal activity and make it illegal. 
I mean, that's really what they're saying here. A smoke-free Britain by 2030. Really? Will it be drugs-free by 2030? Will it be obesity-free? Will it be alcoholism-free? I mean, look, you know, this is a massive overreach by government. I, I, I loathe these people and their very instincts. If you over-regulate, prescribe and overtax the product, you basically drive something that is legal into the hands of those that deal in illegal drugs. There have been 97 fire bombings of shops and homes in Melbourne in the last two years alone between warring tobacco gangs. It's just astonishing. So I think there's a, you know, a real danger here that you effectively drive tobacco into the arms of the drug dealers, you make it a prohibited substance. Uh, Sunak was on the same course as well, and you finish up with the law of unintended consequences. Well, there's also... Do we want our kids to smoke? No. Ex do we exactly. want our kids to drink too much? No. We don't want any of these things. But... but you've got to do it by education. Yeah. Let people make their own decisions. I love it. The only person ever that has managed to do an hour, a minute and a half on this station and not let Julia Hartley <laughs> Brewer say anything, Nigel Frosch. But he's right. Over-regulation control of our lives. Mm. I, I think that... that what amazes me from a political point of view is that, that Starmer must be very sure of his position mm. to be bringing in these sorts of things so quickly because this is going to go down in a in a particularly bad way, in my humble opinion. Yeah, he, listen, he's got this massive majority. No one in his backbench is going to kick up a fuss about it. No. The thing is, is that he stood in the steps of Downing Street in his first speech as Prime Minister, and one of the things that stood out, because it seemed to like differentiate him from like previous Labour Prime Ministers and what you expect Labour Prime Ministers to say, is he said... I'm going to lead a government which treads more lightly on your lives, i.e. I'm mm -hmm. not going to encroach and, 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 and infringe on you. You know, we're going to go back to small statism. And people thought, people sat up when he said that, because that's not a thing you often hear Labour people saying. Now that he's come and done this today, it seems that this flies in the face of what he said uh, only a few months ago when he won that election. And it's either one of two things. It's either, like you said, he is getting decisions which he believes in but are inevitably unpopular out of the way early, or is this the thin end of the wedge, as Nigel Farage believes, and we're going to go down a slippery slope of just banning, banning, banning more I'm things. I'm not sure that he has a plan. I think this is, I, I think, a bit like the doctors and the pay rise to Aslef. It's all part of, I said it to you before, the tent is so large to, to have got him elected in the first place. I think he's paying off, whether it's the unions with a pay rise or the left who want to control almost everything we do. I think this will be a seminal moment. And people mm. will laugh at me and go, come on, he's around for five years. By God, if you're listening, Ryan, she's good, this Jody Got a voice note already. Uh, Deb's on the smoky bango. Hey, Jeremy. Is this not going to kill the hospitality industry even more? This is just mad. Where are we supposed to socialise if we, the generation that are still allowed to smoke, where are we supposed to meet and socialise with each other? It's just barking. It's, it's, I mean, she's nailed it, hasn't she? Yeah, and I think that the, the, the problem with a big impact on hospitality is that, yes, you can make the argument that only minority people now smoke, but if you have one smoker but in a group of friends... But all tell me the minorities are important. Unless, do you know somebody said yeah, something yeah. to me the other day about Starmer and about prisons? They only they don't like prison. They don't think yeah. it's good enough. We should rehabilitate prisons, but they're happy to send people they don't like to prison. This mm. is exactly the same. They'll stick up for every minority. But if you choose to smoke or you mm. choose to have a drink, let me tell you something else. Why is he not out there dealing with a knife epidemic? Mm. He had his militia on the streets quick enough for the riots, and quite right too. But nothing happened in Notting Hill. Let's not go there again. But there's a knife epidemic, and his answer is to say, I'll give you a tenner for a zombie knife. This is control mm. in its most direct sense, isn't it? Yeah, um, you know, people are going to be incredibly angry about this today. Uh, you know, it's the... It, it, I think it's what a lot of people expected them to do. Not, yeah. in terms, not in terms of the policy itself, absolutely no way. There was not even sort of a squeak of that in the manifesto or during the campaign. And that's lying, but essentially, in, but, isn't it? Well, you know, it's um, it, you know, it's probably, it's probably you know, um, not being honest at, at best and, and deceitful at worst because... You know, I don't think anyone believes that they've just what, conjured this up in the past uh, mm. few weeks or so. It might be something they've been planning for a while. What I think I actually do know, I think the various 
administrations have been under pressure by uh, elements of the civil service to implement similar policies. Oh, so to hold this. on a second, hold on a second. The civil service want this. I think that has been sort of recommended to Don't, by I, various I, I officials can't, I over can't the years. Have that, you see, like the, like the last government uh, decided on Rwanda, not my idea of a good plan. And civil servants who taxpayers pay to do their jobs decided that they didn't like Rwanda, so they used our money to take the democratically elected government to, to to court. You're telling me that you think? I mean. Here's a question, surely. You're, you're a political correspondent. Is it not true in this country now that civil servants have too much power? Should a government not take them on and try and change, or is that never going to change? Well, listen, like, you know, it's always the, the old adage, isn't it? Um, advisers advise and ministers decide. So the buck does stop with ministers. It's whether or not you have ministers who are um, competent enough and bold enough to uh, stamp their authority yep. on Whitehall itself. Like, I think that there are many hard-working civil servants who make the machinery of government sing, and, uh, you know, we, we, we do need them. But when you, have, when you come in there with a political direction, as a government, you need, you need to be the one as the minister who is, you know, have it, having, the, having a firm hand on the tiller because otherwise you might have civil servants uh, maybe over, overreaching a bit. Um, it's an amazing article. No cigarettes and alcohol. Ban on smoking in pub gardens and public places. They are, ladies and gentlemen. That's Keir Starmer. Let's talk more about him. Drivers prepared and warned uh, to get ready for a fuel duty hike in yeah. painful budget. That's a surprise. We will not raise taxes. No income tax, no VAT, no money back, no yeah, whatever. But yeah. we are going to screw, what is it, 30,000 motorists? Seven, I don't know how many. 30,000? Sorry, million. 30 million yeah, motorists yeah, yeah. in this country. Again, I think the argument is perfectly feasible. I mean, we all could see through it. But how many of the electorate believed the BS that came out of his mouth? And within two short months... Bit of a problem. That's going to be that's going to be a problem for everybody, isn't it? I think if he puts up fuel duty in any way at the budget, then people are going to be incredibly aggrieved because we've still got, we've got the receipts from the election campaign where people like me were interviewing senior Labour uh, figures and they all but confirmed, they wouldn't explicitly confirm, but all but wink wink, nudge nudge, you know, this is not going to happen. We are going to keep fuel duty frozen. Wes Streeting told me that our campaign, the Sun's long-running campaign to keep fuel duty down, will be pushing out an open door under the Labour government. And now, and also remember the fact that they said they wouldn't raise taxes on working people. Now, they've sort of now pigeonholed that into VAT, income tax, national insurance. Millions of workers use cars to get to their office mm. every single day. And, you know, the RAC had a really interesting report yesterday showing that we are still not getting value for money at the petrol pumps. You know, we have greedy for forecourts and retailers who are still not bringing down and passing on price falls um, from wholesale costs. And so, I think if you if if, if you if you sting drivers even more, then it's going to be uh, it's going to be incredibly so you can't financially smoke, hard. You can commit a crime, and if you say sorry, you're released. Mm. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, what's this other thing? Woeful budgeting behind 7.6 billion asylum overspend. That's not his government. That's the past government yeah. and governments forever. That's just but the that, That's another thing about Starmer. I know how to stop the boats. Do you? Yeah, you can do that. I'm going to attack the gangs. I'm going to create a border czar. Uh, two months in, no border czar. Uh, two months in, 7,000 people mm. have crossed the channel. He yeah. hasn't got any more answers than the last lot, has he? I mean, I think the honeymoon, and I'm not just saying it, I think the honeymoon period is well and truly over for Sir Keir Starmer. Yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a very good argument. He has probably had one of the shortest honeymoon periods of a long time. Um, he's obviously, I do, I do think that he has inherited a mess with a lot of, this, with a lot of things, like, especially when it comes to illegal immigration. Yeah. Right, you know, for, for, we are currently tracking above any other year in terms of boat crossings. You yeah. know, and that happened under the Tories. They made a bit of progress not last year. Not sticking up for the Tories at no, all. No, a bit of progress last year, but in the past uh, six months, it's been awful. Mate, I'm not sticking up for them yeah. at all, but if you get voted in by saying, I'm going to yeah. sort this, and you don't, and you also get voted in without saying some of the things that you're going to slip under mm. the counter, I think it's a recipe for disaster. Back to your amazing yeah. story, uh, Colin Meister. Pub landlords could make their gardens private, part of their home, and then invite people into their domestic gardens as friends. I mean, you probably need to get a license for it, but <laughs> it's, a, it's a Richard fun says, idea. I bloody well warn people not to vote for Labour or reform at this election, as this would allow these socialists to gain power. My God, what a mistake! What's going to happen next? I think people are genuinely waking up and saying, "What? Let, let, this, you've created madness." Gary, voice note, go. Hi, Jeremy. It's quite clear. Labour wants us out of pubs. We can talk too much and get our own ideas in there. They want us in front of the TV, where they can TV program us. Wow. Jack? 
Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I, think oh. Keir, I think Keir Starmer is actually known to like a pint in his local pub. Is he? Uh, I think so, but he's not a smoker. But he didn't get done for that he's in the curry, did he, like Boris Johnson did? He got away with that in Durham because he was working, although he was in somebody's house. <laughs> Do you believe, just one thing before you skedaddle, and we're so grateful for you being on, uh, when he stood in the garden the other day, he talked about medicine and it's going to be hard and all that. Um, do you believe he's got a plan, or do you think that he's so busy being dictated to the different factions inside his party and doing stuff that will alleviate any pressure and curry favour, for want of a better phrase, do you think he's got a plan? Do you think he's that sort of leader like Thatcher or Blair who says, this is what's needed, this is what I'm going to do? Do you think he's a conviction politician? It's, it's interesting, isn't it? Because a lot of people thought when he was in opposition that he would almost say anything to get elected. I agree. And therefore, you know, he didn't really... Starmerism in a sense, didn't really exist. I think there is sort of more of a uh, philosophy underlining it. He clearly talks about public service a lot. Um, but I, I, I do also appreciate, I think he's had the intro from hell when he came in here. You know, he had a lot of strikes. He had uh, you know, awful NHS <laughs> waiting <laughs> lists. He had, he had boats, but, 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 he had Jack, all of this. Well, I'm talking I, about a plan. Is yeah. If you talk about a £22 million black hole, on day one, if you give 22% to doctors, having nurses only got 5% last year, and 15% to Aslev, you are saying to your union paymasters, yeah. line up, roll up, I'll give you whatever. Mm. And how do you manage to equate that to the British people when we're 22 billion in oh, the yeah, no, I'm, I'm not saying he's handled it perfectly by, by any means. And you know, one of the questions I asked him at that press conference uh, on, on Tuesday was, haven't you basically opened yourself up now, especially with the unions, to playing whack-a-mole throughout the rest of your premiership? Yeah. Because what did he say? He said, I don't think so because I'm not going to be tough with the unions. You know, I didn't give them everything they wanted. Well, some people might say that, yeah, you didn't give them the 35% the junior doctors they wanted, but you gave them 22%. You didn't give Aslef the, the, uh, you know, the, sort of the, the millions they wanted, but you still gave them the hefty sum. And then a few days later, said they were going to strike again. So, you know, that seems to have backfired quite spectacularly. Um, I think going forward now, I think he needs to sort of really show and demonstrate to people that he's not just going to, especially with that side of things, the unions, Roll over and cave. He can speak as he can call himself tough as you know, much as he wants, but you know we know that when Fred Miliband, you know, you have to actually show you're tough by your actions, not by your words. And I think that that's what people are going to be looking for. Real response this, Pete Jolly. I've never smoked, and I find it a really antisocial habit. But it's a legal product, and telling people where and when they're allowed to do a legal thing is tantamount to communism. Uh, adults should be free to indulge in any vi vice they like if it's legal. Paula Maybury from Brighton, the smoking ban just might be the only thing thus far that I agree with this government. I have extreme sensitivity to cigarette smoke and have to deal with people smoking underneath my window all day, every single time, despite the no smoking signs. I'm fly five floors up, but it still seeps into my flat. Interesting. 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 Yeah. People will have their opinions. I don't disagree with Paula, but I do think you're in trouble. I do think you're in trouble if you start to say to the British people, you can't say that, you can't write this, you can't have that cigarette, you can't have more than one pint. Mm. Because the one thing about this country is we're supposed to be... Uh, it's freedom, liberty, democracy, yeah. all those sorts of things. Great article. What, Thank what, you what very are you much. Gonna, no, really, really. If you haven't bought it today, uh, Jack Ells from the front, no cigarettes and alcohol. By the